Harshita, first of all, thanks a lot for joining the call today. Thank you so much, Sahil, for giving me this opportunity to have a talk with you. And it's a great pleasure to have a talk with you. And Harshita, today we are going to discuss a lot about the university, about your program. But before I ask you any questions related to that, can you please introduce yourself to the audience? Yes. Uh, I have completed my bachelor's from Indeed, sir. That is from the Aviate Institute of Engineering and Technology. And I'm a 2020 pass out. That is a recent pass out. And I started my master's journey. It was not a consistent master's journey that I have thought about. But uh, this decision eventually took place from decisions I took. And this was never on the list, if you say so. And I always want to take some professional experience and then go on to the master's one. But yeah, eventually I landed up here and I'm doing my research under professor in University of New Brunswick. Okay. And while you were deciding for the master, you, you, you're saying like it happened all of a sudden to you. So can you please walk us through that, that part of the journey? And did you also consider other universities apart from this university? So how was your journey related to this part? Yes. So... Um, it is said that you should complete your professional experience and then go for masters in Canada. I had the same thought and same view, but this thought actually changed when my mother told me this thing that you should actually gain the academic experience that you could gain and then put that experience into the professional one. So this one decision actually made me rethink about this thing that yes, I should go my masters, I should go for my masters. Talking about the universities, there were so many universities that I've applied. As a student, I was at every point, I was uh, not sure that will I get into it or not. Even, you know, the visa chances are also dependent upon that, the right. type of university you choose, what you go through. Uh, I applied in Lakehead University, the Bishop University was there, University of Windsor was there, University of Regina was there. And this was also, this was my backup, basically, if you say so. University of New Brunswick was always my backup. But um, I, I went, like, they gave me the chance that I have never thought about. So I decided to go for University of New Brunswick. Okay. And I think, like, University of New Brunswick was a backup just because there's not much information about this university. But I know, like, this is a great university. And we are going to talk about this part, uh, about this thing in later part of the video. But before I ask you that thing, so can you please tell me something about like what were the course requirements and what was the admission process for this university? Yes, uh, for this university, the course requirement was that you should have a background that a four year bachelor degree uh, in computer sciences. And then this was there that you should have a letter of recommendations from your professors or your peers that you have. For me, uh, it was not so much difficult because their application process was much easier than all the universities. The mm -hmm. interface that they have used for this was very easy. Even this university has been so kind to us that each and every email that was that we used to send to them about any question was answered within 24 hours. So I loved their process and I was so happy that they're answering each and every question that I had. And even they helped me with my visa requirements as well. They have a department which helped you with this as well so it was all very smooth if you say so and UNB has been so many so much kind to me for giving me all the things that other universities don't provide they actually yeah. give you help you with every step you have so yeah I've been thankful to them okay and what was the time span between the time when you applied the applied for this university and you actually got the offer so just to give the audience an idea like if they have applied how much time they can expect so I applied in January and I got my offer letter in April and the okay. thing started okay. in April actually. And I was destined to come at here at September, like 2021, but due to COVID, I was not able to. So if I have to say so for every university that I've applied, it actually takes a, a minimum of six months to get a reply from them. Mm -hmm. UNB has given it me before because I was a research student, but if you're a course based student, it actually take minimum of five to six months to get an offer letter yeah. from that. Okay. So we have already discussed about the admission process. Like the university is very cooperative regarding that. But one thing that most of the international students are concerned about is the fee of the program and the chances of any scholarship. So what's your experience with that? So my experience, if, you, if you're coming for a course-based uh, program, 
university has so many scholarship programs that they provide you that you can apply in and then they will check your eligibility and will get you into it they always try to give as many a scholarship as they can and if you are a research student and you have luckily got a professor who is cooperative and he is also receiving a funding from somewhere if there are chances that you can get a good scholarship from him or a good funding from him research student they have this advantage other than the course based research student they will get either minimum of the minimum they will get something but you can't say so for the course based so yes this happens and it all depends upon the professor you are working under research all matters i think the research starts with the phase that you are working under a very good supervisor who is cooperative enough to provide you with everything and help you at every step of your research so yes i am thankful to my professor that he has been so kind to me and did you apply for the scholarship or did you get one oh yes i did actually i am uh, fully funded under my professor and he is giving me every um, yeah we can say my fees is covered with them and moreover the all the things that are required for research has been provided by them so yes i got a scholarship from my professor oh that's cool and since you have mentioned that you are pursuing your research based master so i'm curious to know what is your a normal day in the life of a research based student so like uh, for the course based we know yeah that you have to go to the lectures then attend the lectures then prepare the assignments and everything but what about the research students so for the research student it is half as same as a course based ones and and a very different from them uh, half of the things are very different from them we are ten, we are made to complete some of the courses that are required for the research and then we start our research process for a research student it is mostly reading as many as research papers as you can uh, like getting as many as things from one research paper getting the limitations the future works and then look for those limitations and futures in other research work so pretty much it is like reading the research papers every day it should be it should be made a habit and here they teach us how to read a research paper how to get the resources that you want from that research paper so yeah it is a very good thing to go for research but trust me it's very difficult as well you need to be very more patient <laughs> okay but what's the process for your the completion of your degree do you have to go through a lot of exams and assignments how, how this thing works for you so it is pretty much same as course based if you say so you have to give the assignments the exam same as them but we actually give less uh, we take less courses as compared to the course one course one has mm -hmm. to take more than 10 courses and we they actually take five courses so we go through the same thing we use the assignments and we give the projects everything goes on the same but when the thesis work start it's very different from them we have to provide with a proposal we have to present our proposal nicely there's ethic boards that work here um, everything is actually it is a, everything goes in work with our university you have to be in communication with the dean assistant dean your supervisor uh, and then they approve everything and then the work goes on every each and every step requires an approval from them oh. so it's work like that yeah. okay and in talking about the coop opportunities so are there any for the research students i mean you might also have your friends in in the coop space masters so what's the coop opportunities for both of the uh, degrees for this also unb has been so it has been so helpful and it has provided so many coop opportunities that everybody um, i have seen so many of my friends that they are getting the coop actually and unb is helping them for research based it is it depends upon the supervisor you're working under the more you will actually if they allow you to go to the coop your mm -hmm. thesis will get delayed your research will get delayed eventually because you will not get the time to work on that it will not be your study term but most of the time here the supervisors they say that you should focus more on the thesis part rather than going for the coop because the industrial work will start eventually after the research right, right. so coop has been so good here that Yeah, UNB has uh, has so many tie-ups with NB Par. They have been very on, like Purulator. There have been so many companies they have contact with, and they actually help you get into one. So oh. yeah, Cohab has been good here. Okay, so that's the interesting part that university helps you to uh, find a coop because in some of the universities, like it's upon students to go to the companies, then get in get a coop, and then uh, update the university with the coop letter. 
but i think if the university is helping that that will be a great uh, thing to do for the students and as she's talking about the campus uh, so like we don't know much about the province of new brunswick and also the city that's in which this uh, university is located so can you tell us something about the campus so uh, is it a very big campus or are there any facilities that's provided on campus so how's the life on campus of uh, of the university of new brunswick campus is actually a very this is a very big campus each and every department has its own library for cs we have cs library and then for law we have law library and moreover there's a one big library that we have which connects all the other libraries uh, in this campus uh there have been so many facilities that have been provided by unb for example we have a safe ride option that has been provided if you're working late inside the library like up till 12 or 2 the libraries are open here till 2 as well actually so there is a ride that has been provided that they can drop you home at this point of time that starts oh. it starts around like 5 pm at work still there is nobody in the campus or you can say till 2 am and for the grocery runs they have been so kind to the international students that they have actually tuesday has been assigned to us that we can go for the grocery runs with them they will pick us up and they will drop us up as well with the grocery um when the international international student arrive over here there is a department which helps uh, him or her with everything finding the housing residence uh, even the food security things have been taken into account you have been given proper diet plan that you don't lie behind on your health as well so unb has been supportive to international students a lot and talking about the city if you are coming from a metro and don't expect a good night life here you don't have so this city is quite after 6 pm we have nothing here we have the uh, walmart and all things that work after that but if you expect a mall or something to go for a like a ride or have fun with friends they are not it has it is getting developed day by day we mm. never used to have so many indian restaurants here but recently we have developed one so yes it's good moreover if you say about um yeah UN, unb has been uh, has provided so many things even when you arrive here there's a orientation session that goes which makes you comfortable with the environment with the climate here with the people here and and if you're coming over here just be ready for a lot like a longer winters and the shorter summers things will revolve it will change like in a second you say you don't know when it's going to be rain or when it's going to be something like that it's yeah. unpredictable here okay and harsh you're talking about the other students like for you it's the funded masters but some some students they might need to do some part time jobs to carry out their daily expenses so how's the scenario over there so in case the students are not able to find anything any part time opportunity on the campus or they are not able to get a part time in their own uh, industry maybe let's say not in the uh, not in a big corporate right for the part time so are there any other options that students are choosing and what's the availability for that type those types of jobs so unb provides so many on campus jobs jobs for the students they are allowed to work like 10 hours in the campus as well uh they are giving more than the minimum wage and there are so many jobs on campus that one doesn't need to go for the off campus but if they are oh. going for the off campus as well there are so many opportunities around here in predicton that you can go for we have all the big chains called mcdonald's tim hortons they are always hiring even the walmart is always hiring and if by any chance you don't get the on campus and off campus actually university helps you to provide some financial aid as well that you can actually like it's type of a loan that you take from the university mm-hmm. and pay it after you get the job so unb has been helpful with this fact as well and jobs are not difficult here to get you will easily get one job if you go out and put your resumes in and yeah it's it's it's, it's easy in predicting there are so many job opportunities and they have recently more because of arrival of more students here arrival of mm-hmm. more resources here so it's been good here okay uh, i think that's it for today's talk harshita <clears throat> thanks a lot for providing us so much information about this university because i don't think so there there are many of the videos that are talking about this university or we don't have much information as the international students about this university and i think you provided us with a great overview of what exactly we can expect from this university
and we will definitely cover uh, more questions I, i know like people will have a lot of questions and they will comment in the comment section below so we'll try to answer them and if possible maybe we'll try to make another video on based upon their questions thanks a lot for your time sure. i'm always available here and for the students applying for the research one i would like to say one thing at the end is that please whenever you apply for the research research thing be ready that you have to approach as many as professors that as you have to because it's very difficult to get research or research supervision here because not more of the professor would say yes yet you can work under us you have to be ready for all the challenges you will face here and be sure that yes you have to be mentally ready to do the research it's never the one way out that yes you can opt out anytime you don't mm -hmm. uh, be ready and in canada research has been more competitive than course based so always be ready with the backup plans that you have if you don't get into research that what you can else do so yeah all the best to each and every one who is up, applying to come into canada and if you are determined enough you will get into it i'm sure thank you so much sahil for giving me this opportunity to share my ideas and share my views on unb and unb has a lot for every one of us so please come over here and enjoy the weather here thanks a lot harshita thank you so much sahil